you are going to tackle this 2021 homeschool year with verve and vision and energy, and it's going to be exactly the way that you always planned it. Just like last year's plans. 2020 homeschools didn't quite happen the way we expected that they would. And we don't always get everything the way that we want it. If 2020 taught us anything, that would be it. But 2021, you can create clarity, vision, and purpose for your homeschool. And I'm going to tell you how. So I'm Teresa from Capturing the Charmed Life. And I'm here to help homeschool moms turn their homeschool challenges into their homeschool charms. Press subscribe and you will hear more from me on how you can turn those challenges into charms. And if you press that bell, you're also going to hear when I've released something for you to be encouraged by. So how are we going to turn our 2021 homeschools into something that we actually want, that we're going to be intentional and have clarity in how we're going to do it? We're going to have vision. We're going to have a sense of purpose in it. Well, I'm going to get to that. But first, I wanted to share with you my home, my Christmas gifts, right? How could I not show you a few of my favorite Christmas gifts like this mug? Isn't that gorgeous? Even suits the globe, this, my entire house. I love this mug. Mm. And you know what else I love? I love tea, but I also love coffee. And this was by far one of my favorite Christmas gifts this year because I haven't been in a cafe a lot this year. In fact, on my hand just a couple times, but this year is a milk frother. And I can make milk that looks froth like they do in a cafe and make my cafe lattes every morning. And since my kids know that I'm routinely doing some sort of homeschool recording, I also got a new lipstick. He chose the perfect color. Isn't that great? A 12 year old boy that figured out what lipstick color his mom wants. His 15 year old sister might have been involved. A milk frother and a book on Rumi. I am an advocate of poetry tea time, but I'm also an advocate of reading really good books. And this is a poet that I come across all the time in all sorts of other books, like another book that I'm about to share with you, The Not So Big Life. And in that book, Sarah Susanka quotes Rumi all over the place. So I was really eager to add to my book collection, Rumi. So today I checked my Facebook page, the Homeschool Mama self-care page for questions that people might have had. And I had an excellent question by one mom that asked me, how do I handle my emotions in my homeschool? Whoa, big question. That's why I wrote a book about how to deal with your emotions as a homeschool mom. Also, I'm doing it still, and I'm still learning. And that book was written out of practical experience, 15 years of practical experience. So I've got a few things to share with you there, but it all depends on which emotion you're talking about. She also asked, how do you homeschool with a number of kids and maintain your sanity? How do you multitask? Also an excellent question really big questions. So I'm going to throw you and that question over to my homeschool mama support group, which is free. It's available through the homeschool mama self-care page on Facebook. So jump on there and you can check out what the answers to that question are. You can ask questions of other people. Other people can engage you. I'm there as well. And I've got a bunch of resources, all the resources that I have scattered throughout my blog. I have them all collected on the homeschool mama self-care group of homeschool mama support group. So join us. Recently, I released a podcast about the top 10 posts for my last year. I always find it really interesting because I get to learn a little bit more about you. So when I check the analytics of my blog, I learn what people are tapping into the most. And so on my most recent podcast, I share that with you. Probably to no one's surprise, the most popular post of all year last year is how to create a pandemic routine, a homeschool routine. And I phrase it how to create a homeschool routine 
not a schedule. This week, I released a five-day 2021 Homeschool Vision Challenge on my podcast because that's the point of this discussion is how do I create a vision for my 2021 year? I've got a five-point plan. You will receive daily emails that include both video and just a really short excerpt about that video and an action plan for you to take so that you can include five different points that are pretty significant and things that you really do need as a homeschool mom to do this homeschool thing for a long period of time. They are in there. So it's a free challenge. Just join up on my Homeschool Mama Self Care page on Facebook or Instagram. If you're there, I'm at Instagram too. Okay, so let's talk about taking stock. First and foremost, you need to actually consider where you're actually at in your homeschool. But I'll back up a bit and say, not only do you need to figure out where you are in your homeschool, you need to figure out where you are as a mom. Because who you are influences your homeschool. It influences how you engage. It influences how you receive your kids or how you hear your kids, or whether you're really hearing your kids. I know, I've, I'm in the mix, I'm still doing this. I've experienced this for the last 20 years, and I think I've learned more about me than I've learned about anything as a homeschool mom. At this time of year, before the new year, I spend a few days sitting with Sarah Susanka's book, The Not So Big Life because at the back of her book, she has a series of questions that I find really useful to consider where I've been, where I am right now, and where I wanna go. So I sit with a pen and a journal, a cup of tea, and as much time as I can eke out, and I answer those questions and consider, where am I now, what do I want, and where have I been? I'm gonna share a few of those questions with you, but I want you to know that this book The Not So Big Life was a book that I learned about because I'd already picked up the book, A Not So Big House. She's an architect and she talks about creating the not so big house, using a house design with the intention of creating a home that's really functional and purposeful, specifically for a specific family. And I was in that place of choosing to build a house, creating a house design about eight years ago, living in it right now. We were doing a small locum, a short-term stint in a small town in this part of the world. I fell in love with the area and I said to my husband on a walk, I want to live here. I want to live off grid in the mountains and outside of a small town in a 500 square foot home, homeschooling my four kids. And he said, we're going to have three teenage girls. 500 square feet seems a bit small. Always the dreamer, I still planned. I read the Not So Big House book. I actually have posted all sorts of things that I learned from Sarah Susanka's book on my blog about that house build. And those concepts translate into how you create the Not So Big life as well. So that's how I fell in love with Sarah Susanka's book, A Not So Big Life. So you're going to find the questions that I share with you that she shares at the end of her book, obviously in her book, The Not So Big House. I get a chance to think about what really matters, what's really going on in here, and what I really want because I don't have to put my life on hold for 20 years or you fill in the blank, whatever number you're homeschooling. You don't have to put your life on hold. You can include you in your homeschool now. You can figure out who you are as a person outside of your homeschool mom identity. Homeschool mom identity is fabulous. I'm proud of it. I'm thankful for the experience of it. I'm thankful for the experience that we got to create for our family in the challenges and the charms. But I'm not only a homeschool mom. So who am I? What am I about? What do I want to do now? So I sat down with my cup of tea and my journal and my pen and I answered these questions to take stock. 
Okay, so if you don't have a pen and a piece of paper, don't worry about it. They are on a blog post listed below. You can find these questions on my podcast post. You can find them at the back of her book. And here we go. Let's consider our past year and what a long year it was, right? It felt like one really long day. How have I spent my time? The first question, how have I spent my time? What are the results of the actions that I have taken in spending time? What events, realizations, and understanding have come into being over the course of this year? There's been a few, right? What has inspired me? Last week, I was interviewed on a podcast by Pat Fenner, Breakthrough Homeschool, and she asked me a very similar question. What has inspired me or what have you learned over this past year? And um, it's a lesson I didn't really want to learn. I thought I learned it. Boy, did I have a chance to learn it this past year. And I, we all have. We actually all could answer this if it was valuable to us. Some of us don't want to learn this, understandably. And it was to create communal connections despite differences, despite believing differently, voting differently, understanding what's going on differently, creating communal connections despite our differences. That's one of the big lessons that I've learned in the last year. What makes me grateful? Every morning I journal my gratitudes in my journal since the 1980s. Whenever I heard Oprah talk about gratitude practice, I've been doing it off and on for a very long time. And there is research that suggests that it is actually helpful in creating an optimistic or hopeful or positive mindset. What were my sorrows and disappointments and how have they changed me over the past year? What books have I read this past year and what impact have they had? I'm in the middle of reading one of the best books I've ever read by Edith Eager, The Choice. She was a concentration camp survivor that determined that no matter what her experience in life is, no matter what they took from her, they could not take how she thought about everything. They couldn't take what was going on in here. Excellent book. I have read many books this year. I was at the cusp of finishing my entire Goodreads challenge. By the end of December 31st, I had 24 books to read and I was just days away from finishing Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, also one of my favorite books out there. I don't say this lightly, it's an amazing book that I've read a couple times and as an adult, I appreciate it all the more. But I was just a few days away from having finished that book, just a few days away. So I had three days of really concerted reading and I was looking forward to getting that big confetti congratulations from Goodreads you finished your books in the year. And I did on December 31st, I finished it. And then I wrote, finished book, nothing, crickets, no response from Goodreads. I don't know what happened, but apparently according to them, I didn't finish my list. I might lower the list by one book next year, 23 books, we'll see. So what books have I read this year that have inspired me? and also what movies or other entertainments have moved me and in what ways. I'm a really big film fan. That I call it a film is your sign. But I'm also somebody that falls asleep very quickly into a movie, sometimes 15 minutes, so it takes me a very long time to finish a movie. This year, probably the last three months even, I have made Friday night my time to watch a movie that I like, something that's dramatic, something with a glass of wine, just for me so that I can engage something that I really love because the rest of the family, not so much into drama. In fact, it's hard to get any teenage child into anything longer than, I don't know, a Snapchat bit or YouTube or something quick, but I love movies. What journeys have I taken? What condition patterns have I recognized this last year and what experiences have allowed me to see them more clearly? If 2020 has done anything, it has removed layers of ourselves 
to help us see ourselves, how we relate, how we feel about the world, how we feel about things happening that weren't expected. So those are the questions that we consider in our past year and at our present. We can engage questions about our present, like how am I different now from the way I was last time this year? No question, I am way more present, way more focused, and way more at ease at present. Yeah. So how can I integrate the key lessons of the past year in my life right now? Are there any strategies, phrases, questions, or flags that have particular significance to me right now? <sighs> There's so many really key words, I think, from last year. One, of course, is Zoom. Um, another one is mask, pivot, pivot. Have we not all just pivoted and pivoted and pivoted? You know, I said that to my daughter's dance teacher and she's like, that already had meaning to me. Yeah, it didn't quite have the same meaning as it did for me this year. Are there any things I'm trying to force into existence right now? And if so, what would happen if I stopped trying to make them happen? In my experience, the more that I try to force something, the more I don't really show up fully for it. I don't show up authentically for it. So then the energy behind it doesn't quite come across and it's not received as well as if I'm being fully authentic. To what part am I giving birth to myself? Metaphorically, obviously. Good question, right? What am I becoming? I hope you're becoming more you through all of this, through your homeschool experience over the years. If I've learned anything, it's stuff about me, who I am, how I react, what are my triggers, what am I really feeling? How do I think about these things? I've learned a lot about me. I have a free downloadable PDF of you becoming you checklist that might help prompt some ideas and how you can actually capture more of who you are on my Homeschool Mama support group on Facebook. So you're welcome to go grab that. So then we're gonna also engage questions that are about your future, the plans for the future. I know it seems daunting to plan ahead when really should I? I don't know what's gonna happen next. That's true, except that you get to decide how you're going to engage your next whatever months in your homeschool. So specifically, what is it that I wish to focus on in the coming year? If I could sum up all my desires and longings in a straightforward statement spoken from the highest aspect of myself, what would it be? You should come over for tea and I'll explain to you my word, manifest, manifest me. And then I chose three words to focus my days. Now, this is an idea that I got from Brendan Burchard. Three focus words, because I don't know if I told you this, I'm not really a resolution person. I don't really want to resolve to do anything, because as soon as I resolve not to eat the Miss Vicky's Lay, uh, or Lay's potato chips, I will find a way to put them in my pantry. I don't want to resolve to do something, but I do want to have a focus. So I've chosen three words to help me focus in my 2021. So I write those intention words every morning at the top of my journal, and I put them into my iPod as a reminder. Yes, I said iPod. No, I don't have an iPhone or any phone. I've got an iPod. Yes, they exist. So consider the past, plan for the future, be present in your present. These questions help us all to take stock of where we've been, where we are, and where we're planning to go. When we've done this, we need to remember that living happens in the present. So practice being present. From Henry David Thoreau, he says, above all, we cannot afford not to live in the present. He is blessed over all mortals who loses no moment of the passing life in remembering the past. So may this be a useful jumping off point to a successful, satisfying 2021 homeschool. Cheers. If you're looking for a few more encouraging words and a five-point plan 
for your 2021 homeschool vision, I have a free challenge for you, which you can find down below or on that Facebook page, Homeschool Mama Self Care. I hope you and your kids can turn your challenges into your charms.